All right, this is, I'm gonna be honest, my second attempt at filming this video. I don't know why I'm putting so much pressure on it, but I'm gonna go as unscripted as possible. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. Some of the advice might be a little bit of tough love and blunt and to the point, but honestly, that's what I needed when I started training. I was young, I was having fun, and I could have definitely used a little bit more structure. So, for those of you who are new here, my name is Vera, I'm a flight attendant. I've been a flight attendant for six years now. I love my job, it is so much fun. If you've recently been hired and given a, a training date, congratulations, that is so exciting. My DMs have been blowing up lately. I'm constantly getting messages from people asking me what to expect from training, if I have any tips for getting through training, and I've been saying over and over again that I'm gonna make a video about it, and here I am finally doing it. It has been six years, like I said, since I've been in training, but if I were to go back and give myself advice before I went to training, this is what I would tell myself. First thing I would have told myself is, you need to set up a morning routine for yourself. Do not wake up and just grab your phone and start scrolling. You need to have this sacred little ritual routine every morning. Get up at the same time every day. My classes were late, so I know that's gonna be different for everyone. My classes were later in the day. Journal, drink your hot lemon water, meditate if you need to, and do some stretches or work out. I didn't work out the entire time I was tra in training and it affected me afterwards. By having a good morning routine, you need to set yourself up for success the night before. Do whatever you can to go to bed at the same time every night. Start your wind down at the same time and then go to bed at the same time every night so that you can get whatever it is number of hours of sleep that you can function your best at. You are going to be learning and gathering a ton of information, very important information, and if you're not properly resting, you're not gonna properly retain that information. Therefore, you're not gonna perform great on your tests. Get some sleep, prioritize your sleep, have a morning routine to wake up to start your day on the right foot without stress to center yourself to be balanced and zenned out for the rest of the day all right next one you need to pretend that you're on big brother now i will say i did a good job at this but uh there are some situations of people who did not do so good at this so this isn't so much a message to my past self as it is a message to future trainees you need to pretend like you're on big brother for those of you who don't know big brother is a reality show where you're basically being watched 24 7. that is how you need to handle your flight attendant training you are being watched for the most part, within reason, obviously. But when you are at training, when you are at your hotel or your lodge that you're staying at, wherever your airline ends up putting you, they're taking into consideration your behavior because how you behave outside of the classroom and the simulators is going to be how you are representing the co company that you're getting hired with on layovers. And honestly, in general. So if you're acting crazy, getting wasted, passing out in a hotel lobby, or bullying other trainees, you're not gonna make the best impression of yourself, point blank, period. And it's very crucial to make the best impression of yourself while you're in training. You know, you just need to be respectful. Be kind to the hotel staff at the hotel or lodge that you're staying at. Have integrity with how you treat the room and how you treat the property and just be kind to other people because that's gonna show how kind you are to the people that you're working with once you're, what we say it like on the line, once you're on the line, once you're flying and working trips. So you need to pretend like you're being watched because in a sense you are. All right, next one. <laughs> it's very important to study alone because everyone has their own study style. But with this job in particular, even if you say I can really only study alone, I don't do well in study groups, this was my problem. It's very important to have a study group while you're in training because this information that you're getting, the things that you're learning, emergency drills, emergency equipment, emergency scenarios, all of these different things. When you are actually working and when you're in the heat of the moment and it's a real life situation, you're gonna have to work as a team. So you might as well get used to working with other people and studying with other people. Plus, it's a great way to hold each other accountable for studying. It's a great way to push and pull information, to point out discrepancies, or to help if someone views something one way, it might be a much easier way for you to understand it. If you were previously confused about something, just get used to studying and working with other people because that is what your job is essentially going to be once you're actually flying. I kind of floated around personally. I would drop in to study groups here and there. I do wish I had a dedicated study group. It would have made training 
much smoother for me. <laughs> um, but those who did have their dedicated study groups, they did do the best in training, I noticed. So it's very important. Even if you don't make friends on the first day, branch out, put yourself out on a limb. If you see a group that maybe they already started their study group, just politely ask if they have room for one more. The worst they're gonna say is no, which they probably won't because that would be super awkward. And if they say no, just find a different group and ask them. One of the groups is bound to say yes if you can't find one. <laughs> okay, my next one, it almost is gonna be sound contradictory, but hear me out. You need to prioritize when to socialize and when to take alone time. Now, some of my best friends to this day are people that I met in my flight attendant training. People who I talk to daily, people who I've traveled with, who I have a ton of memories with and who I know will be lifelong friends of mine, I met in my flight attendant training. There's just a certain bonding that you have with these people and it never really goes away. Now again, there's also people who I met in training who I honestly haven't seen in years. And I might've hung out with them a ton in training. These people, as much as you might, if you're a social butterfly like I was when I was in training, as much as you wanna have fun and get to know these people cause they're these new friends and you're all about to start this incredibly exciting job together, you need to take time to yourself to have a little bit of peace have a little bit of quiet time because it's very easy to get burnt out in these situations where you're constantly surrounded by people. Training can be a very high stress environment if you're not taking the time to just relax and have peace and quiet, but at the same time, have fun. And that's why I know it sounds a little contradictory. You just have to prioritize when is the right time. Let's say you have a, a super early test the next day and it's late and you guys, are having fun, you and your new friends, and you wanna talk all night, that's probably not the best idea to stay up until two o'clock in the morning when you have to be up at six o'clock in the morning to take an extremely important test that if you failed, you would not pass training. Those people, those friends of yours, they're, they're still gonna be there the next day. This is a message to myself, <laughs> to my past self. Um, they're still gonna be there, and you're gonna be friends with them for a very long time, so go to bed. <laughs> Um, it's kind of weird filming this because I'm like super excited for those of you who are about to start training. I don't know, I feel, I can feel the excitement and the anticipation of your new lifestyle because that's essentially what this job is. It's a lifestyle. It's a very exciting one. It's a very fast paced one. For those of you who are into that, oh my God, you're gonna have so much fun. Okay, and then my last one, this is very on brand for me for those of you who watch my videos and watch my vlogs. Bring healthy staples. Now, when I went to training, the company took care of breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the food was amazing, don't get me wrong, the food was super yummy. And, but then we kinda had like the typical vending machines to grab a snack from during training, and there was like this little convenience store area where you could get whatever snacks you want. And of course, I was reaching for candy and chips, and when, when I was eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I would get what looked the yummiest. I wasn't always getting the healthiest options. This is gonna sound crazy to you guys. I gained 12 pounds in training. Now, a lot of that comes from the fact that I wasn't being very active. I kind of let my routine just go out the window when I was there. I just wanted to have fun, enjoy training, and just honestly make it through training. But I would have benefited so much more if I had stuck with my routine, if I had worked out in the gym that was provided, and if I had little things, like just little staple items that would have held me over in between classes or during classes, little snacks, like instead of getting peanut M&Ms, if I had something like one of my bulletproof collagen bars or seaweed snacks or maybe my smart sweets that I like, they're these sugar-free candies that are really good from Whole Foods. Or let's say if I had, instead of the caramel macchiatos that I was getting in the morning, if I had brought my own almond milk sweetener and stevia to put in my coffee. Little things like that would have helped me so much if I had had my own healthy cereal, if I didn't want to eat like, I don't know, some big crazy pancake breakfast or something, or a yogurt with fruit. Okay, so we had a fridge on each floor at my training lodge. It was like a communal fridge, and you can put whatever you want in there when it comes to you know bringing your own food. If you want something like, a bring a blender bottle and your favorite protein mix and just shake it up with milk or water or whatever to hold you over. Those little things, actually nourishing my body and giving myself the fuel that I needed to get through training would have been so much better than these little 
bags of candies to get that little sugar spike to keep me awake through the day. I recommend making friends with someone who, you know, a lot of the times there's people who live in the city that you're training at who are also in training or people who want to bring their car while they're there. Make friends with them, do a grocery haul with them, and as a thank you, buy them a coffee or something or buy them lunch as a thank you for giving you a ride to the grocery store because it's gonna make a really big difference setting yourself up for success and having those little backup things to grab. Get like a healthy chocolate, like a dark chocolate bar or something. Something that's familiar to you and you know is going to sustain you longer than maybe some junk food. And I think that's it. I'm at, I've been talking for 14 minutes. So I'm gonna cut this down a little bit, post it. Again, for those of you new here, my name is Vera. This channel, I post Usually every Sundays and Wednesdays, I post videos about my layovers and how I stay balanced while working, traveling all the time in different cities all the time, and just some of the little fun things that I do. I'm so excited. I just have this new huge influx of subscribers and it makes me overwhelmed and overjoyed. I am so grateful for all of you. Please say hi in the comments. And oh my goodness, if you just got hired or if you're planning on applying or you already applied or whatever to an airline, please please say hello in the comments. I am so excited for you. Congratulations. Again, this is going to be, this is going to be life changing for you. Sounds dramatic, but it's true. This is going to completely change your life. This job is, and I say for the better, as long as you take advantage of it and have the most fun that you can have with it. You're going to meet so many people. Oh my goodness. Anyway, if you enjoyed, give this video a like, Say hi in the comments again and hit subscribe if you wanna see more from me. You can follow me on Instagram, at Balanced Flyer, just like my YouTube channel name, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.